and today we have another tutorial for you guys. Today's tutorial is about skin retouching. But before we go any further, if you guys are interested in seeing content related to photography, videography, and digital content creation in general, be sure to subscribe. Now guys, I get a lot of questions a lot of times about skin retouching and what's my overall process. I had an earlier video that I did about skin retouching, but I think today I'm going to do, I'm going to retouch a photo for you guys that I did recently, a natural light photo as well as I want to um, speak a little bit about the whole process of skin retouching. So, skin retouching, in essence, is pretty much um, removing blemishes, um, inconsistencies in skin to give, uh, you know, a, a more splattered image. So, the main goal when you're retouching an image is to ensure that you have a smooth transition between the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows. Because skin, skin naturally has a lot of pigmentation. So you'll notice that there's blotches on, on, on people's faces naturally due to um, whether it's their environment, their diet, whatever be the case, you know, they could be having a hormonal, hormonal imbalance. So you really try to even out the inconsistencies and have a smooth transition. So it's you don't want to have like a, a big jump to a dark spot. You want to have a slow gradation and that in essence creates a more flattering image. So what I use personally for skin retouching is frequency separation. Now there's lots of methods that you can use. You know, persons will use the laser tool, persons will use the mixer brush tool, persons will use dodge and burn. But the end all is what somebody, you know, me and a lot of my friends have spoken about is the end result. So as long as you can get realistic looking skin and you know a nice end product, it doesn't matter what method you use. But for this particular tutorial, I'll be using the um, frequency separation method and using the mixer brush too. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into Photoshop and yeah, so let me just start. Well, since this is a tutorial, I'm going to break it down from scratch. So in essence, when you're doing frequency separation, what you're basically doing is you're, you're pretty much separating the low details from the high details. So when you think of low details, think about Tones, think about tonality of the skin. So, in the low detail, all you really have is your complexion. Wow, these chickens are really doing the most right now. <laughs> but yeah, in the low detail, you have um, your complexion pretty much. Yeah, you basically want to separate your. Um, you need to separate your. I'm sorry, guys. So, but yeah, you need to separate your your tones from the the high detail, which the high details will be basically like actual artifacts on the skin, like, you know, um, bumps or, you know, like more detailed stuff. So like even your quote unquote, um, like, you know, things around your eyes. Um, oh my God, these chickens. Yeah, things around your eyes, things um, you know, around your mouth, like hair, those things, those things would fall under high details because they have a lot more information. So, um, to separate them, what you're going to do is you're going to create two copies, right? This is my personal method. So I press Ctrl J twice to create two copies. I'm going to call one copy high layer. I'm going to call another copy um, low layer. So for my low layer, what I'm going to have on my low layer is my tonal information, my my complexions, um, just the, the parts that like have to do with the colors of the image. So what I do from there is I click, I turn off the high layer, I click on the low layer, I go to filter and I go to blur and I select Gaussian blur. Now what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to blur out the skin until I only have information for the tones. I don't want to have details on this layer. Because this layer is in essence the layer that will have tones. Now, the higher the number that you use for this, the more information will be in your high layer. Because the more you blur it out, you're going to separate this from the overall image. 
So the more you blur for this out, is the more information will be in the high layer. The less you blur it out, is the more is the more information will be on the low layer. So when you're painting out, you end up painting out details. So you ch I would suggest for a person to keep a moderately high number. For this image, I think I'm going to go with eight. So I have a little bit of um, texture in this, but not too much texture to the point that the image will become, you know, um, soft and mushy. I'm going to select eight. Each image will have a different um, particular point as to which you'll notice too much or too little details. So it's not, there's no set particular number, it's just based on the image. I went with eight this particular time. It might be different for other scenarios. So now that I've blurred out this particular layer, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the high layer. Once I click on the high layer, I turn it back on, and then I go to filter, other, no, my apologies. I go to image, apply image. So when I go to apply image, I then go to layer, and I go to apply it to low, and I'm going to go to the blend mode, subtract. So what I'm basically doing, oh, and for your scale, your scale should be two and your offset should be 128. To be honest, I don't know the exact reason why that's the case. That's more of a technical thing. I should probably find that out, but that's the scale and offset that you should use. So what I'm basically doing now, if you notice right now, the image looks black and white. All I did is separate the high details from the low details. So all the information that you're seeing here is pretty much the high details that are inside of this particular photo. So now, you notice you can't see any colors because the colors are on the lower layer. And this is like, this is basically the image itself with the high detail information. So everything here is basically like the, sh the, the shapes and the particular, um, the, the texture, the texture of the image pretty much. So I've done that. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode for the high layer. And I change the blend mode for the high layer to uh, linear light, all right? So now I can create, I click on both these items and I create a group. Now this group is going to be called FS for frequency separation. Now, this isn't the end all. Once you've created um, your frequency separation layers, oh my gosh! Anyways, once you've created your frequency separation layers, you're going to create duplicates of both the low and the high layer. This is called non-destructive editing. Now it's very important that when you're editing to create copies of your layers because, let's say hypothetically I was editing on the regular layer itself. If I was to make a mistake, then I'd have to start over from scratch because I didn't have a backup. So in creating copies, you basically edit non-destructively that you can go back to the original and make changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the low layer and I press Ctrl J. Now you're gonna see low copy. While holding down on the Alt key for Windows, and I think it's Command and Mac, you'll see this little icon come up here if you're hovering above, and I click on Low. So what I did is I clipped the Low copy onto the Low layer. So now what will happen is that I can use the Low copy and edit. It will make changes above the Low layer, but the Low layer itself is still the same. So I basically have a backup saved. Now I'll do the same for the High layer, and I'm going to do the same Alt, Command and Mac, and click on the high layer. For the high layer, I have to change the blend mode from linear light to normal. And if you look here, basically after adding all those layers, the image is still the same. Now the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do well, to help you guys, especially if you're just starting, the first thing I suggest you do is to go on to adjustments and click on a black and white layer. Now, it's very easy to make um, skin tone adjustments on a black and white layer because on a black and white layer, you can see imperfections a little bit more clearly. So, red is a tone that is existing in all skin tones. So, what I'll do is I'll bring down my reds a bit so I can see her skin tone a little bit more clearly. I can see the gradations, I can see the, 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 the shifts from dark to light. So now that I can see that, I'm going to go to the low copy. I'm going to select my mixer brush tool. Now the settings I use for my mixer brush tool, I, oh, well I haven't even plugged in my, my, um, my drawing tablet. Um, you don't have to use a drawing tablet when you're doing retouching, but I think it makes it a little bit easier if I'm being honest. Um, 
I've been using my mouse for a long while, but it's not that expensive. If you're not using a Wacom tablet, you can get like you can get drawing tablets for um, you can get drawing tablets for probably like thirty dollars. Um, I I, have, I got one for thirty dollars. This is the the Y Y M or Y one tablet. Um, it's pretty good. If you're doing illustration, it's not the best. But for me, I'm only doing um, skin retouching, so this particular tablet fits my particular needs. All right, so I'm gonna just plug this in up here, and then um, put this in here. I'll leave a description. I'll leave a link in the description for the Y1 tablet. Um, it's probably like twenty-five dollars. Um, it will make your skin retouching a million times better. Uh, yeah, so I got to my mixer brush, right? Um, the first thing you need to ensure is that you have um, checked this box over here to ensure the brush is clean. You need to make sure that your brush is clean because you are only painting in the colors that are in the image itself. Now, a lot of persons don't usually explain the settings for the um, brush, so I try to explain them as best as possible. Wet, think of wet as how, literally how wet the, the, the brush is. So when a brush is wet, it will determine how much you drag across when you're um, when you're painting using the mixer brush tool. The load is the amount that it's going to take up when um, when you uh, basically select an area. Mix only applies if you're painting using other colors. So because you're using a clean brush, mix will be basically mixing other colors while you're painting in a particular area. So let's say I'm painting in her skin and she has brown tones. If I added maybe white. I'd also be painting white as well as brown while I'm using a mixer brush. And flow is um, basically going to determine how strong it is because um, how strong the overall brush is. So I'm using Prince Mason settings and pretty much um, it's 30% for the width, 30% for the load, 20% for the flow. The mix doesn't matter because we're not painting using other colors, the brush is clean. So um, if you feel like you're a beginner as well, I could tell you to even lower your flow to maybe 15% so you have more latitude because the more you paint, the more you're gonna see changes in the image. So, all right, let me go ahead and start. I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to start here. Um, when you're doing frequency separation, think of it like you're doing makeup, right? So let's uh, just go here. Um, I'm just gonna do a little bit of painting here. You want the brush to be as big as the area, not too small but not too big either, so as big as the area. So I'm gonna paint a little bit in your forehead. And you try and um, paint in the particular areas. And you try and paint in the, in the, um, the gradation. So you want to smooth out where the transition, and you want to smooth out the, the area itself. All right. So I don't know if you guys can notice a difference already. I've only been doing it for a very short period of time, but I can already see a huge difference on this particular photo. I mean, give or take, the model had lovely skin already, so I didn't have to do that much work. And a great thing about this particular method is because I'm only painting on the low layer, I'm not losing the details in her skin. So let's do a, a quick on and on. So all I did was smoothing the transitions. So think of it like you're doing a little light makeup, like you're just smoothing the transitions. So because there were some harsh transitions around her, her skin, now it's a little bit more smoother. I didn't take out all the details in her skin. You can still see them and she's can still see inconsistencies, but I just made it a little bit more smooth for her transition. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna just do a little bit more, not too much because, um, you know, I still keep my things looking you know, human. <laughs> I don't want it to look like a, a doll. Uh, unless you want it. If you guys want me to make it look like a doll, let me know. Like, I can do that too. But I like more realistic looking photos. All right, so I think I've done enough here. I'm gonna just go in, zoom in a little bit, and remove a little bit of blemishes. Not too much, just a little bit. Um, so I use the clone stamp tool for that. What I do is I select an area close to the particular spot that I want to the blemish. And I just paint it out. For clone stamp tool, you want to zoom. Oh, I actually should have mentioned that detail. When you're doing um, frequency separation for your low layer, 
you want to be as zoomed out as possible because you don't want to be too in. But when you're doing the, um, when you're taking your detail out of the high layer, you want to be as zoomed in as possible. That way, you can you know make sure that you're getting the right parts. Um, I'm not going to be taking out too much uh, the, uh, for blemishes. Honestly, I think um, it's natural looking. So yeah, like. She doesn't have bad acne or anything. She just have a, she has normal skin. Actually, she has very good skin. I should tell that back. So this is the image retouched. This is the before. This is the retouch. I'm sure you guys can see a difference. And as I said before, guys, I try to keep it very natural. Like I'm not the kind of person that you can look at my photos and you see no details. I need details to be my image. And uh, even though this image is going to be about uh, frequency separation. I think I'll just go dodge and burn this image and done because you know what's the point of not? <laughs> so let me just um okay next thing too. Don't stop at just the face. You know it's very tempting to just do the face alone, but you can do the entire um, image. So you don't probably have to spend as much time on the other areas as you would on the face, but still just do the other areas. So um, I was already shooting at a very low f-stop, so it's not as if the other areas are that much in focus. So, I've done that. Um, typically after I do that, the next thing that I go ahead and do is dodge and bury. Now, because this is a brata, like, um, if you guys, guys are Iron Jamaican, brata means extra. So because this is extra, I'm not going to be going into detail with the dodge and burn process. If you guys want a dodge and burn tutorial, let me know and let me know in the comments. Leave a comment below if you want a dodge and burn tutorial. But uh, I'm just going to do a basic dodge and burn. I'll tell you what I'm doing. For dodge and burning, you're basically adding back the contrast because in a sense, you kind of flatten the image to get um, the frequency separation. So for dodge and burn, you're just going to add back a slight amount of contrast. So when I'm dodging and burning, I turn off the frequency separation because I want to see where the light was, the light was hitting naturally. I'm going to turn on my black and white layer. I'm going to click on the dodge layer. I'm going to go to my brush tool, not my mixer brush, a regular brush tool. I'm going to paint in the areas where there's highlights. Um, I have a flow of 28%. So I'm going to go ahead and paint here. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint here. Wait, I think my brush settings are off. Um, let me just check my brush settings. So all I'm doing is I'm basically just adding in um, details back to my highlights. Stuff that was already there. I'm just I'm just basically think of it like makeup again. I'm just contouring her face. The spots that already had um, shadow details and um, and um, highlight details. I'm just I'm literally just adding them back in. So I have the black and white layer. You can see I basically added contrast back to her face. I'm going to turn on my frequency separation layer. To, I'm going to group these right now so you can see holistically what was done. And so yeah, this gives you an idea as to what dodge and burn is like. This is with frequency separation. Oh no, get off here. This is with frequency separation only. This is with frequency separation and dodge and burn. So yeah, her face looks a little bit more three-dimensional, so much more detailed, just a really interesting image. So now I'm going to go ahead and add um, some more micro adjustments. Which, this is the after. Now, this isn't the same, um, you know, look I have on Instagram. Maybe it's different. I think Instagram images are a bit more blue, but you know, you're not gonna always the images the same way. So, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please be sure to like and comment. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you need to see more tutorials on photography, videography, and digital content creation in general. So, um, yeah, guys, if you have any questions, please remember to leave them below in the comments. If you have anything you want to ask me, I mean, yeah, the comment section is open. Let's start the conversations in the comments. For all my photographers out there, all my videographers, just let me know. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you again.